It's Lithuanian Dream Podcast. Each week, we share ideas from contemporary Lithuania. Today, we will be speaking with one of the only politicians that has continued to be in high political positions throughout all 30 years of Lithuanian independence. Just after Lithuania gained independence in 1992, Linas Linkevičius became deputy chairman of the Seimas Committee of Foreign Affairs. Afterwards, he was the Minister of National Defense, Minister of Foreign Affairs, took various diplomatic positions to NATO, the EU, and Belarus. From 2012 onwards, he was our Minister of Foreign Affairs. Linas, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. To start with, as one of the best diplomats of Lithuania, you must already have a perfect pitch for the country. How, so, how do you describe Lithuania to a person who does not know much about Lithuania? Very difficult, but after such introduction, also very difficult to speak. <laughs> so, you have to be just, just positive. Uh, well, those who uh, do not know where we are, of course, uh, you cannot, uh, just one, one discussion, one conversation will not convince, but when you're saying that you're a small country, that's already attractive, uh, less than three million, it's really not, not too much, and also that we had a uh, quite difficult period in our history, and I'm always saying that 50 years were uh, stolen from our uh, history quite recently and uh, definitely very difficult to catch up. So we needed to do that. And uh, all in all, uh, this uh, small country always fight it without arms, just uh, having idea, consolidated people, people's minds, and uh, uh, examples like Baltic chain, for instance, uh, uh, good indicator of that fight. Uh, it coincides with talking in Berlin, so we will celebrate soon removal of Berlin Wall, 30 years, exactly the same date, 30 years for Baltic chain. And you know, two, two million people standing in the row from Tallinn to Vilnius. So good, good chance to look at the map <laughs> to, to see where Lithuania <laughs> located. And, uh, and that was uh, relatively recently, 30 years ago, uh, after occupation. And now we're members of European Union, we're members of NATO, we're members of OECD, of Eurozone, of Schengen Zone, whatever. And really, we are always criticizing ourselves, uh, we are always uh, not perfect, uh, which is true. But we have to admit, and also we have to acknowledge that achievements are really huge, high. So now the, this is the country where you really can do business. If you trust and believe in the rates, look at doing business, uh, World Bank, number 14 in the world, this is really a big achievement. 21, Economy Freedom Heritage Foundation, also places us quite high. Uh, very active among startups. 10% of our uh, scientific lasers produced in the world coming from Lithuania. 10%, which is really a small country going, going around the globe. And uh, outreach is really in all continents, basically, especially those who are dealing with the sophisticated technologies. We have fastest uh, public internet in the world. Not many knows know that, but this is as a consequence uh, allows to develop uh, very popular trends like blockchain, like fintech, for instance. So I believe it's enough uh, to show uh, the <laughs> trademark, uh, maybe to, to get interested and uh, really facts uh, speaking for themselves. And I believe this is really a good place at least to visit. More and more visitors coming, more and more tourists discovering this unknown land, which is really beautiful. Uh, everything is beautiful, what is small. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for sharing all these uh, highlights of our history and what we should be proud about. Um, so you just mentioned a lot of things. Uh, one of those was the fall of the Berlin Wall and uh, the, the, the Baltic chain as well, uh, us joining different organizations. And knowing that you already been in politics for all those years, could you share with us those crucial moments for you as a politician, as a diplomat, uh, and how how did it go for your eyes? What were the you know highlights of your career within you know the picture of Lithuania developing from you know gaining the independence and now almost 30 years after? 
I was lucky to deal with issues which are consolidating society, not splitting, not dividing. And this is security, defense, uh, foreign affairs. Uh, it should be kind of consensus in any country, uh, which, as we know, not easy to reach. Uh, but in our case, we really were quite uh, efficient in building this consensus since the very beginning of our independence. And you rightly noticed that I really was present when we were choosing the way to go uh, integrate ourselves into European Union and NATO. So since the very beginning, it was really looking for the way to go, right? It was independent and now looking around, there are some sentiments. And I remember uh, neutrality was a very strong feeling. We have to be neutral. But quite soon it was realized that being small in such a geopolit geographical and geopolitical situation, we cannot survive being neutral. You have to stick to some international organizations and one international community. So the Union was already gone, so nobody wanted to come back. And we uh, understood that NATO is something we have to uh, try to, to get in, although nobody, almost nobody believed. Can you imagine 1993, 94? Uh, but all political parties across all spectrum uh, agreed that this is, this is our priority. And that's a good indicator of uh, being able to build this consensus, even in the early 90s, because it's not easy. I remember the parliament was not easy to discuss any issue. As conflicts, not just discussions, but conflicts even on any issue. But uh, in, on this, on this, we really managed to agree. So, '94, uh, January 4th, I remember at that time, President Brzozowska sent letter to Secretary General of NATO Manfred Werder, expressing will of Lithuania to join NATO. And after 10 years, we became members. But that was the beginning. Same with the European Union. It was also quite clear position that we must do that. This is our way and we have to belong to Europe, not, not only geographically. And that was also very, very clearly understood by all, all political parties. So uh, I would say that this consensus building and ability to join forces when needed, even uh, having some conflicts and it's, uh, we, are, we are same as in other countries also, uh, this young democracy was really quite with some peculiarities, but nevertheless, on this on this issue, we, we, we agreed. So, uh, since very beginning, we used all uh, leverages in our possession to reach this goal. Although, although as I said, uh, not not many believed. And I can tell as an uh, ambassador to NATO for, for many years, uh, until 2000, year 2000, I was told by many of my colleagues, future allies, uh, not they were not speaking officially, but nevertheless they were saying that your country is nice, your freedom fight also very impressive, but you will never be members of NATO, for instance. So that was kind of encouragement. And uh, regardless uh, that we decided that we have to go, we have to continue to, to blame no one, just to do our homework, and that was also a feature of possible consolidation when needed. So I really trust our, our people. I, I really, regardless, uh, the politicians sometimes think that people are uh, not not smart enough. Uh, they are totally wrong. It's vice versa. Maybe it would be true. <laughs> politicians are usually not perfect. Uh, but really, this uh, potential of of will, of of, of consolidated, so to say, drive towards uh, towards selected aim and and goal to be achieved, it's really very impressive. And yeah, in ten years we became members of these both both organizations, and now we really. Uh, even in, in these organizations, we feel uh, not as a newcomers, especially after our presidency at the Council of European Union in the second part of 2013, which was already six years ago. Uh, but uh, everybody looked at us. Are we able to do that? Because to manage an organization of half a billion population with trillions of well, bu budget, which was by far nothing to compare with our own resources, and to do that in a very responsible period of time, so that was really a success story, I would say. And after that, even more respect from others and more confidence for, for, for ourselves uh, was something like that. Also, I would add uh, one more check point, uh, our membership in Security Council 2014-2015, non-permanent membership, but two years, and cheering this uh, uh, most prestigious club of policy in the world, uh, this is really quite important. And that was the period when, when not just us uh, looking for uh, somebody to whom we can call and uh, ask something, uh, somebody from all over the world were calling to Lithuania 
because Lithuania was cheering this uh, elite club uh, two months during this uh, this uh, this two years. So presidency in the uh, council, council, so to say, United Nations was kind of a highlight, I would say, of our political achievements, and was also undergone quite successfully, and very good evaluations from our partners. So, in addition, I really would say that uh, now time to do business every day, because time of this, uh, so to say, miracles and achievements and magic, uh, when you're doing something, uh, making breakthrough, and the mindset, uh, it's, I shouldn't say gone, but uh, now it's really calm period of working. And now we have to collect our minds, to collect our people around the globe. If I said uh, around 3 million at home, roughly 1 million abroad, very small nation. So it would be uh, too much privilege to count those who are immigrants, those who are immigrants. We really, really should feel uh, all together the same family. And uh, personally, I, I believe this, is, uh, this could be a major task in the coming years and days. Uh, I have my, in mind not only economic achievements or, or some, well, success stories in the business, which is by far, of course, it's important, but also moral uh, aspect, because uh, everyone has own family, own parents, regardless where they live. Yeah, so you can be angry sometimes on your parents, but you also should take care because it's your family. So I hope that all, all Lithuanians living around the globe have, have this feeling. If not, uh, we'll try to make sure that they will have. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I can ensure you that people who are listening to this podcast, for sure, <laughs> have love to Lithuania and uh, they are for sure are the dreamers and the achievers like, like you, I think. And uh, I think the question as well about uh, how did you maintain the focus on the goal? So you had the goal to join NATO, EU, the Security Council. And, you know, everybody were telling you that it, it cannot happen, right? Yeah. And you did it for 10 years. So how did you kept yourself motivated and say this can be true and you kept other people around you who are working for you, you know, focused at the goal, at the prize, rather than being more negative about it or pessimistic? Because Lithuanians, we sometimes say that we are quite pessimistic nation, that we don't see the good things. But actually what you're saying to me now, our country was built on the really hope and really like focus and being positive and like really focusing at, at something that it, it became oh, right. true. Uh, I agree with you 100% because it's also my message usually when I'm talking that okay, let's be critical, let's bash ourselves, which is maybe our national habit, uh, but we sometimes overdoing. And uh, if others uh, noticing what is positive instead of us, ourselves, uh, it's not good. Or, or sometimes if you are always, even if you're achieving something, you calming down and saying, no, no, nothing special happened, it's bad as always. It's also discouraging and uh, kind of balance should be uh, reached and I believe we are not there yet. So uh, let's be also, let's also, uh, well, <laughs> learn how to celebrate achievements, even if these achievements uh, quite uh, of the clo close people, which is, which is sometimes also very painful with somebody else achieving something, not us. But this is really the way to go. Lithuania has something to say. And even now, yesterday, I was so proud to take part in this uh, conference of, uh, so to say, smart uh, country uh, convention, where Germany have chosen Lithuania as a partner country to learn from Lithuania how to do business, how to develop smart technologies. And uh, we, on one hand, it was a bit surprising, such a big country, Germany, such a potential, but they uh, recognized achievements where we really uh, developed uh, our market, digital market, where we developed uh, space uh, for the people to get uh, public services 90% on, online, to register kids in the kindergarten, uh, to manage uh, garbage, uh, I don't know, uh, transportation. It looks like we used to this already, many of us living in Vilnius or in Kaunas, uh, but for others, it looks like something new and to be learned. So uh, we are proud that we are important, important for others, not only for tourist attractions or some 
food industry, but also for smart technologies, uh, which uh, shows that we uh, sometimes really under underestimating what we achieved. So uh, let's uh, keep moving. Uh, and one of the uh, features of what I would like to single out uh, in the course of this modern history, really something in the blood. On one hand, you do not trust 100%. But on the other hand, you're using all opportunities to achieve what you decided to do, regardless uh, obstacles, regardless disbelief, uh, as, uh, as far as NATO was concerned, regardless this so-called encouragement that you will never ever become a member is still uh, continuing uh, this way until, uh, until victory comes. I believe it's something in the blood. But when people visiting Lithuania, you know, and when uh, learning more about our history and uh, finding, for instance, that we had organized resistance in our forest until 1953, this partisan movement for liberation of the country, or single fighters were arrested in the early 70s. They are surprised and shocked sometimes. And then this maybe understanding comes why this country, why these people are so stubborn sometimes, and uh, how, how they are so motivated. Maybe maybe that explains something. So it's always very difficult to explain something, what is happening. It's very easy to explain why you have defeats. Uh, but when you're winning something, you're saying, well, look, maybe it's coincidence of very um, good events, a uh, chain of some uh, just lucky, lucky, lucky things coming. But uh, maybe this is, this is the story. So the recipe is very simple. Let's keep moving. Uh, let's be critical as always, which is our natural feature, but let's also notice what is positive happening and that will help us to continue uh, this way uh, to create uh, more than small but very beautiful, attractive country. Interesting not only for us, uh, cozy to live, but also for others to visit and to invest. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so then the, another question is uh, relating to that. Uh, what are the challenges that Lithuania needs to solve in the near future and how diaspora could help with our knowledge or maybe, you know, from business side, maybe political side or any kind of like social side. How can we help Lithuania to sort of uh, position itself in a stronger way or... Mm. We improved a lot. Uh, when we joined the European Union in 2004, 15 years ago, our living standards uh, reached some 48% of uh, average European. Now it's 75, 76, uh, one can say 78. Big, big, uh, so to say, the improvement. Um, but uh, still, uh, people traveling, uh, they see that some other countries, they live better. And uh, regardless, all these tables and, uh, uh, so to say, rates uh, of international <laughs> organizations where we can see our, we are placed quite high, they should be transferred into everyday life. And people should feel, should understand that these achievements uh, really improves their own private life every day as we speak. Uh, healthcare conditions, education, business, environment, everything. It's not yet the case, as we know. Uh, so uh, that would be my, my dream and also I believe it's our challenge to make sure that it will come as fast as it is possible. So let's do that all together. Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, so this is uh, going to be a, a bit of funny question, so take <laughs> it with a pinch of salt. Uh, so, one of the, I don't know if you know, but uh, one of the most trickiest questions, uh, young Lithuanians who, are, who were born after the, the, you know, regaining the independence, and I believe others, uh, receive is, uh, the question is, oh, you are Lithuanian, so do you speak Russian? Uh, and you should see, and I guess you already did see people's faces, there's an emotional reaction to it, because we believe that people think in that way that we are Russian, and uh, I think we all have that. So I just wanted to ask you, as a senior diplomat, do you receive this question? And how would you advise us to handle these situations and think about it? Politely and patiently explain, uh, because less. Uh, at the beginning, I remember maybe there were some questions, now it's less, uh, because we're really quite widely known. Uh, you remember there was also our religion basketball, our players uh, playing in NBA were also called from Russia at the beginning, now it's by far not the case. So drop by drop, step by step, the uh, situation changes. So let's be patient. 
We're a small country and uh, let's not be naive. Uh, definitely not everyone around the globe knows uh, our, our beautiful country. Uh, time comes and the uh, situation will be changed. So only by doing things we can make them understand and learn who we are and where we are. Not by bashing and criticizing or being angry if somebody uh, lost in the geography. So not a problem. <laughs> Once uh, I was asked, uh, after saying that I'm from Baltic states, uh, how was the war? And I couldn't understand what war they were thinking about, but apparently they were thinking about Balkans and oh, not Baltic be. states, so I guess you had these situations before. Yeah, there are some well. leaders of big countries also mixing up, so let them also learn, period of learning, becoming more perfect. <laughs> Let's be tolerant. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, you mentioned that uh, you know, small is beautiful. Yes, I uh, hope so. so. I hope so. <laughs> Since I'm not small myself, so I'm always jealous. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like a dynamite, very powerful. You know, the small thing. But what can uh, big countries or the leaders, Western country leaders, could learn from Lithuanians or Lithuania? You mentioned, uh, you know, persistence or being, you know, focused. What else can we teach and say that these are qualities of our national identity, maybe, that we can always showcase and say, okay, this is our strong point. Well, the already learning I just uh, spoke about, mm -hmm. smart technologies, already learning, cyber defense issues, uh, smart sophisticated technologies and also I would add uh, we have a lot of uh, well documents uh, confirmed uh, freedoms uh, human rights uh, not just human rights but also rights of the countries to make a choice about their future but we know that in practice it's very difficult to implement and especially it's difficult for small countries because others usually deciding So maybe big, big countries can learn from us understanding of these values they are declaring and uh, which is becoming like uh, coming out of the blue or just by default. Uh, but this is not, 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 not that, not, not the case. And we see what is happening now in our continent, in Europe. We see uh, annexed Crimea, we see uh, 20% of uh, occupied Georgian territory. And this is happening in our age, in our century, so to say. In our presence, not with our participation, but in our presence and maybe sometimes passive, uh, passive uh, I shouldn't say participation, but passive uh, observation of, of, of these events, which is also not very good uh, story. So uh, let's let remind ourselves and also our big partners that values, if they are not defended, they mean not much and, and they should be defended. Maybe this is also something uh, our big, big uh, allies can learn from the small countries. So, yeah, uh, as a last question relating to that, uh, I would like to ask, uh, we are, as you know, Lithuanian Dream Podcast. And uh, we talk with people who shape Lithuania or shaping from around the world. And I, I wanted to ask, what is your personal dream for Lithuania for the next decades, uh, maybe centuries, and how do you see it? What would be that goal to reach now after you know, joining all these organizations? And As you said, to, to make life better, living standards equalizes uh, to, to the Western space. Uh, we are already joined physically, but not yet uh, mentally. Uh, I would like to see that. I'd like to see this even more active in the international arena, uh, which is already happening. I would like to see more joy in our life, uh, more smiles, uh, less, less criticism sometimes. As I said, let's celebrate what we have achieved and let's be proud of what we are doing. This is also a very important feature of everyday life. And that uh, other, other things will, will come uh, by default. <laughs> okay, so thank you for joining us today. Thank you. And, thank you. Um, Yeah, so thank you for everybody listening and uh, yeah. Let's come back to check what was achieved. Yes, like uh, let's meet in 30 <laughs> years and uh, have another conversation about the cows. Exactly. <laughs> thank you. It's Lithuanian Dream Podcast. Each week we share ideas from contemporary Lithuania.